So what has been happening is the bilge is hella nasty. Okay, well, I think you're getting the picture maybe. Okay, so the last time I was here, I used a wire snake with a paper towel to find some leaks in this area. So to test my tanks for leaks, we got some food coloring. So we got green, blue, red, and yellow. My plan is to put the red one in the diesel. I'm 99 plus percent positive that there are no diesel leaks now. However, during our fateful, but arguably lucky voyage down uh, from Oregon, there was some diesel spilled and who knows, it could have been spilled like through the floorboards. Uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna do blue for the fresh water tanks, probably yellow in the black water tank. And I was thinking green for uh, just kind of tracing leaks in general. So let's start by adding some dyes. Hey everybody, I'm Amber. And I'm Peter. Welcome to Sailing Asara. My life's dream has been to sail the oceans and explore new places. We both quit our jobs to try a different lifestyle. And after a long break and some travel, we're back preparing the boat and doing some shakedown sails to get ready for sailing south. Hey all, so we have a really shitty episode for you this week. So after the naming ceremony, I was determined to tackle the smell that was permeating the boat. I was quite sure that the leak was coming from the holding tank area, so we had already cleared the vent line with our new tool and replaced the blackwater hoses, but there was still a bad smell and leaking to the bilge. I used the dyes to test the freshwater and diesel tank and also random areas around the hull, and I'll have the results of that test at the end of this video. If you remember, in a previous episode, I took out the diesel tank and I coated it with multiple layers of fuel-resistant epoxy glass, which is similar to what I've decided to do with the holding tank. Despite the fact that this is a new 316 holding tank that was replaced by the previous owner, they're still known for rotting out on these boats, and I believe that encapsulating the tank in epoxy glass will fix and prevent future leaks. So Amber came down to help with the shitty job, First, we had to get the floorboards up. A heat gun and a strap wrench helped to get the thick hoses off. There you go. Oh, shit. Right there. Oh, so this God, is true. this is the vent hose. Oh, I can smell it already. Mm, yeah. Oh, fuck this. Welcome to our new smell of today. Tank, I think, should be free to. Okay, but let's talk about it before we start doing it. Oh yeah, it's 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 ready to go. I need to I need to drag it like put two feet this way, the whole tank, and then we can lift it. Yeah, but now you need to grab the hold at the very bottom. You need to step down into it. No, it's too long. Are you going to be able to lift it? Yes. I'll do it right here to touch The hardest part was removing the hoses and the smell, and once we did that, getting the tank out with two people was pretty easy. Alright. Slow, slow. There we go. There it is. Poop in a tank. Hello, Peter. How are you feeling today? I feel actually... Like <laughs> I was going to say, you know, I was feeling pretty good, but... About but we're going to a, a really shitty store. Everything in here just is guaranteed like two rounds and then it breaks. And it's, it's, for, Hello. Hi. it's for a really good purpose. <laughs> okay. So. so I'll just follow you. Yeah. Where are we going? We're going to uh, get a sandblaster so we can sandblast the shit out of that tank. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a stinky job. 
Do you have a uh, Harbor Freight memorized where you know everything where, where it is? Yeah, I was going to tell you you're going to the wrong spot. Oh. There's the sand blasting. Oh. Oh. Uh-huh. I think this is the guy we want. What? Is that thing going to fill suck up the shit? <laughs> I think we need this so good. No, it, it uses, no I know. It, it, it pressures. It pushes little bits of walnut shells. Yeah, that. That right there is sh Okay. <laughs> Why do you think I'm doing a shit job? It's tiny, babe. Okay. I'm gonna try the tiny one because it's a tiny job. Hopefully it's not a No, tiny you piece got shit. big shit. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get that pumped out on Monday. So. Uh, you were just gonna say you just wanna look at the whole store before we leave, right? Oh, yeah. Because no man ever just comes in for one thing and leaves. Just make sure, actually, I should check my list. I really need more clamps. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You think you need more clamps, but you don't. You always need more clamps. It's I like, broke one trying to make the that's like one women in underwear. We always think we need more thongs, but we don't. First step, cleaning the tank. I'm not even calling Amber out for this one. I'm gonna just try to do this. Well, looks about like I remembered. Super beautiful. I have some muriatic acid that I'm gonna pour in. Okay, so it is full and I dumped a good, almost half of this full jug, a gallon jug in. And you can see about how full it is right there. So I'll be checking it tomorrow morning. I'm actually hoping that it, a good amount will have drained off. Uh, which will prove that there's a leak uh, and then hopefully I will be able to find it. Okay, this piece does not come out far enough to um, get to the fiberglass part that it needs to screw into, so I'm gonna put this on the top just like that and just rivet it through. That's in there. Yeah, that's good now. Okay, it is the next day and we have absolutely zero drainage. So at this point, despite not finding any leak in the tank, I'm gonna go ahead with a plan to cover it with fiberglass, starting with the pickup tube inside. I also sandblasted the tank, but I didn't get any video of it. So you'll have to trust me on that one. So first, I sand and wipe down the pickup tube. Yes, it is hard to sand the pickup tube inside the tank. <laughs> Don't have no pumps, so prefer to hardener for the correct mixture by weight. One to five. Okay. Since the access inside the tank was tough, I decided to use many smaller pieces of fiberglass for the pickup tube. Then I wetted out each piece of fiberglass cloth before putting it on the tube. I repeated that process until I had the entire tube covered. All right guys, it's gonna be too late to turn back real soon here. Will I fuck up my holding tank? Because I've never seen anyone do this. It must mean I'm a genius. 
There it goes. Okay, it is fully wrapped around. You can see a little bit of what I did here, and I do believe that I wrapped the entire tube pretty well. Then I wiped down the tank with acetone and gave it a final sanding to prepare for the epoxy glass coating. Getting the edges of the glass mat cut properly was important so it could lay flat. While I didn't vacuum bag it, I did use these plastic bags in order to help remove air bubbles and help with the overall layout. All right, let's take a look at peeling this off. It's very easy and uh, not perfect. Boy the edge, that's pretty rough. Got to redo that. I'll probably just redo the edges. I'm fast forwarding it here, but the whole process took many days uh, with drying happening each day, following the next day by a sanding and then a recoating. Keep in mind the goal was not to make the tank beautiful, it was just to mitigate any future leaks. If I was building a brand new tank, then I would do this differently. These are like one of my favorite tools ever. So yep, then more cutting, epoxying, drying, and sanding. Here you can see how I cut the fiberglass to try to work with the tank's unique shape. Okay, so it is a few days later, we'll finally get back to this. And, oh, it's so satisfying to pull that off. Oh wow, I don't know if you can see this corner, but that is, real nice and I mean this is crap but it's real nice and solid so I'm gonna give this a quick little sand down okay so I have coated large areas of this uh, there's two layers over all of the corners there's kind of a, a thickened coating around this side. Oh, let me catch some drips here. And keep in mind guys that I am not trying to completely encapsulate this tank. Uh, and one of the reasons why I haven't like coated this top corner is because I know that this tank is not gonna spend most of its life even mostly full. It's gonna be m halfway to mostly empty most of the time. And the corrosion is gonna happen on this side, on the bottom. And I I've seen that now with the diesel tank and this tank, it'll happen here, it'll happen around the corners and things like that. This tank, it looks almost spotless. In fact, the only bit of corrosion I saw on it was on the underneath side of the pickup tube, which you couldn't actually see, but you could feel. Uh, and that's the tube inside the tank. And keep in mind, I did coat that tube with fiberglass. So, you know, I, I think that I extended this tank by easy 5, 10, or even 15 plus years by doing this. So, that's what I think. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will think this is a terrible idea, but I'm gonna be able to sleep 
easier knowing that I have this thing fully coated in fiberglass, in, in epoxy glass. So I'm gonna let this dry. I might flip it over and make a few more touch-ups there and then it is now time to install. Thank God, I will have a sailboat again. Okay, uh, down here, it smells a little diesel-y, but it doesn't smell hooey, and this is not leaking like it was before. So I would love to get the tank down here, but I don't think I should try positioning it. I just think that's a recipe for, you know, bashing things. If it wasn't for my shoulder, look at me here, making excuses. But I don't want to mess up my shoulder more than it already is. Okay. Hopefully it's gonna be and hopefully not. Uh, hopefully not injurious. It's just awkward. Guys, you know me. I feel like I have to go for it. I mean, what do I have to lose other than redoing this whole thing? Getting the tank in was very challenging, and it wasn't until I tried putting the nose of it down first that I had any luck getting it in place. Then we secured the hoses. And then here you can see the extended tab that we installed now reaches the fiberglass floor. So there we have it. Safer, longer lasting, and more secured, and hopefully a smell-free blackwater tank. That tank is not something that I wanna to have to worry about when we're in the middle of nowhere on our boat. The next day, I also smeared some 4200 around the pipe connections to hopefully mitigate any potential future leaks before installing the floorboards and cleaning up everything to get ready for a nice little party. Okay, I'm gonna leave this open for the last bits of this to dry. It's getting pretty dry. It's smelling better, smelling less, and all the all the difficult stuff is done. So, just finish cleaning up and then uh, have a little birthday party. So the last question might be, what was the smell coming from? The answer is, even though this video is being edited well after the shitty episode came up, I'm not totally sure, but I do suspect that there was some old nasty stuff, maybe from the head, maybe a little bit of diesel spilling when we had to run the boat off of jerry cans from inside the boat, but the dye test did not show any leaks from either the fuel tank or the black water tank. However, literally months later, I found out that during rains, I would also get leaks to the rudder post in the stern and that would eventually drain down into the bilge. I also later learned that one thing for sure that was causing the odor was this. So the fuel tank has an air vent because the fuel tank, you know, breathes. It, it, it expands and contracts with the temperature. Uh, I had removed that and kept the vent venting into a jug on the inside of the boat. And I'm ashamed to say that it took me over half a year to figure out that that was probably one of the biggest sources of the smell 
which was also much more noticeable when the weather got warmer during the summer. So there we have it. So coming up, I have my first solo sale. I test out the new battery wiring and I try to silence a brutally loud inverter all while we prepare for our trip south. So I'll see you there. And until then, fair winds, my friends.